Hey guys, welcome to Functional Print Friday. It's been a little while since we've been here at the workbench. I'm excited about this week's video. I'm unfortunately not excited about the condition of what's in this box. Uh, this is actually some parts for my 1978 FJ40 uh, Toyota Land Cruiser. Uh, it's a little hard to see because this box is just absolutely huge. I've got the camera sitting way back. Uh, but this is the part that gets inserted into the door uh, that the window glass slides in. Here, let me bring you over to my Tacoma and I'll show you what I'm talking about. All right, so it's raining outside, or I'd actually take you up to the barn and show you on the Land Cruiser. Uh, but it's basically, it's the part that goes uh, inside the door here. So it fits uh, into the door and the glass both slides in it and fits into it at the top to form a seal. All right, so back here on the workbench, the problem with this part is, and it is a little hard to see here uh, in the plastic. Let me actually get this pulled out of the plastic. I don't have to get it all the way out. You can already see the problem here. So it's probably, it's a bit more evident looking at it from this side. So it is crushed. Um, and it is a complicated uh, shape and bend here. Uh, so it'd be difficult to get this uh, bent back out. You can see it's creased a little bit there. Uh, and this, it's very important that the size of this and the shape of this is exactly right because it basically snaps uh, into um, the actual frame of the door with just kind of a, a friction fit. So this was not a cheap part. Uh, again, I have two of these, one for the driver's side, one for the passenger side. They're both worn out on my old Land Cruiser. Um, and they were almost a hundred bucks a piece. And I reached out to the Toyota dealership that I purchased these from online. And um, they were nice enough to send me, you know, just a, a new set to replace these. Um, unfortunately, um, let me go grab it. Here's both of them. They th I think they, they figured they'd be slick and send them in different packaging rather than the, uh, the packaging that uh, the Toyota factory used. And uh, I, I haven't even taken these out of the package yet, but you can see the issue here. These are, uh, it actually makes the other ones look a lot better to get one out. So the dealership I purchased these from um, has now refunded my, my money. Um, they, they don't want to try and send any more, and I can totally understand that. Uh, but looking at these, I hate to throw them out. Like I said, it's an expensive part to buy. There's also not a whole lot of them around. It is still a part number that is active in Toyota's system and you can order it. I don't know how much longer that's gonna be the case. They haven't made the FJ40 Land Cruiser in quite a long time. Um, I don't know if they still manufacture these or if these are new old stock parts. Um, I'm not even sure exactly it's interesting how they manufactured these. You see there's slots here where they have the sharp bends. And then this, this piece of chrome here looks like it's crimped on. Um, but I was thinking, how could we possibly straighten these guys out and make them usable? And here, let me get the, let me show you the end. So here's the shape that these guys are. It's a little hard to see in here with the, the light, I guess. Yeah, it's fairly focused on that. You can see it's, it's kind of a U here at the bottom. Um, but then there is like a step that comes up. There's a felt inside. Um, and then there is chrome that is crimped on to uh, either side. So I was thinking, what if we made a two-part die in PLA that was this shape uh, that, the, you know, a piece would fit here on the outside and a piece would press in from this direction and we could either use a clamp um, or a hammer or maybe even a press uh, to try and get this sheet metal back into shape. So let's give it a shot. Uh, I'm not gonna show trying to measure this. Uh, I'm just gonna take this up to my desk and measure it as I do the, the, uh, the drawing. It's gonna be a fair amount of estimation because uh, I don't know if this was bent in, you know what, it's probably uh, was bent like a roller die and the material I'm guessing shifts a bit because it's not consistent. Um, if we look at this end and then we look at another end, say this guy here, hard to get it in front of the camera. Uh, it's a little bit different than the other one we just looked at. And if we take a look at this one that I pulled out of the package, it's also just slightly uh, different. And some of that's probably from the process of trimming these. And some of it's probably from the process of these going through, again, what I'm guessing is a roller die uh, and then some sort of a large uh, press or combination of dies to give it the, uh, the curves. So I'm gonna get, uh, what I'm getting at is I'm gonna get rough measurements um, 
of a section that looks the straightest or, or not the straightest, but the most even um, between the two sides um, and try and estimate what these, uh, what these curves are here um, and make up a die for this or actually make up uh, two dies, an inside and an outside. So here we go. And here is an extrusion of the, uh, the drawing of the profile that we're trying to shape with the two dies. And if I go ahead and here and unhide, here is our lower die. And you can see the lower die matches exactly with the outer face uh, of that piece that we're trying to form. The inner die, uh, I've got a bit of a gap because this channel is felt lined. So, and I'm kind of making an assumption that the felt is going to press down to about half a millimeter thick. It's basically, it's impossible to measure that. I mean, it probably measures out to about two and a half, three millimeters thick now, but I know that felt is largely gonna flatten out and I'm assuming it's gonna flatten down to around half a millimeter. Worst case scenario, I can always make another one of these inner dies with a little bit less clearance. So I made this 30 millimeters in height. I think that's gonna be about right. I don't wanna try and form the, the whole thing at once, but it's gotta be thick enough to have strength not to separate. And also, you know, hopefully kind of line up with enough of the, the rail as we start to work down that, that rail uh, to, uh, to line up and straighten it out. So again, I'm just kind of shooting in the dark here. We'll see how this works out. I've not tried to make uh, a, a sheet metal die like this um, in plastic before, so. All right, let's get this uh, let's get this sliced up and printed. Right, and here are our actual prints uh, for this. And as I mentioned uh, when I was showing the design, I left not only a gap for the thickness of the material uh, in here, but also a gap to compensate for that felt uh, being in there as well. I think the felt's mostly gonna flatten out, so I didn't leave much of an extra gap. I think I left half of a millimeter, uh, plus the thickness of the, uh, the sheet metal itself. But let's see how these fit. Yeah, that looks like it's going to be pretty close. Again, there's some variation in the uh, in the material in different places that I checked it, but we've doesn't have to be perfect. We've just got to get pretty close. And inside, yeah. Oh, that's a. Uh, that's nice and snug. I think we got a chance at this working. If this, uh, if the die holds up, uh, if, and if it doesn't, I'll tell you, it's, if it fails, if it splits on us here, I think the way to make this even stronger would be to have uh, something on the, I, either we could just make it bigger uh, or something on the outside that's a stronger material. Uh, like if we size this to fit inside of a piece of steel or something like that so it couldn't spread. Because the PLA is gonna be very strong uh, in just a, a compression. Uh, perspective, but we're putting this part in tension down here uh, as we push this inner die down in. So let's see what happens. Okay, I'm going to try with just a clamp first. I forget how many pounds these are rated at, but these apply a pretty significant amount of force. These Irwin uh, quick grips. And if that doesn't work, uh, I've also got a bench vise here and I've got the hydraulic press as well. So. What you can't see is the, the two ends that are like three feet long, flipping all around here, making it really difficult to keep this in place. Yep, 
you know, in hindsight, as I stand here trying to force this uh, into this piece of sheet metal, I'm realizing we could have made a couple different stages of inner dies here. We could have started with one that was uh, came down to almost a point uh, here on the end to force this guy open and then work our way up to the final shape. But I'm going to keep going. We'll get it in there. Okay, we're already to the point where I cannot push that in any further by hand. Um, and I apologize for the view here. I am really struggling to keep this from flopping all over and in frame. Let's see if I can get the clamp onto it. Okay, let's see what happened here. All right, well that is, that is not a bad start. Uh, I felt it kind of give and I wanted to see what was going on. So that is, it's already way better than what we started with. This does look straight, that's what I was worried about. That's actually why I stopped. I wasn't sure if that had turned in there. Uh, or if we largely got back to shape. Um, looks pretty good. I'm, let's uh, try clamping it in here again. Now, I don't know how much force this is actually applying. Uh, and I, you, you probably can't see. I apologize. It's just it's really hard to get an angle here that works. But we are nice and straight in there now. So I'm thinking I might need to just tweak this by hand a little bit to uh, try and get it closer to the original shape and then maybe work it again with the die. All right, guys, I've been nitpicking at this one for a while. And for comparison, here is the before and here is the after. These were both bent um, pretty much exactly the same. You can see uh, how bad that is and how folded over and kinked that is. And here is the one that I straightened. Um, I was able to get the channel itself. Uh, and actually, after having messed with this, I think the whole thing is made from stainless steel. I think the the overall channel is made from painted stainless steel, and I think this lip here, I, I had said chrome before, I think it's stainless steel. Um, that's the part that I just can't get perfect. You can see all the little marks in there. Some of that uh, was a learning experience. I made those in trying to straighten it out and getting a little bit aggressive with those, those smooth jaw pliers. Um, so, you know, the view from this end looks really good. You know, as you get really close to it, you can see imperfections in that stainless steel uh, trim because it in itself is... Uh, a little sort of U-shaped hoop that presses over uh, the end of, uh, of the overall channel. So that part is really, really hard to straighten out perfect. So I don't think I would end up putting uh, this one on my rig. Uh, it'll drive me nuts. I'll always be looking at that spot and see the imperfection. Um, but I do think I have it straightened out enough that someone would be interested in it for use on their trail rig if they've restored an FJ. Um, and it has, it's missing these all together. And, and these rot out on, uh, on the older ones. Um, the material that's in here is also a felt. I don't know if it's the same felt as this, but it just rots and comes apart. So I'm sure somebody with a trail rig would be quite happy to run that guy in that condition. And I'm gonna do the same thing for this one. I'm gonna straighten it out. However, what I've learned from doing that one and getting it into that good of shape, 
uh, I'm going to apply to fixing one of the ones that is not as badly bent. And hopefully I can use that on my rig. So let's do one of those. All right, guys, I don't know how well this is going to show up on camera, but that is the section down there that was all bent up. And I would say it is darn near perfect. One of the hardest things working on these guys is, I don't know if you could see me struggling there, they flop all around. It's just such an unwieldy piece to, to work on, uh, given the, the shape that it is. Um, so part of it's always trying to smack you in the face while you're working on it. Um, but as you can see in this piece here, contrary to the, uh, the first one that we worked on, and, if I set it this way, it's probably going to stay in place better. Uh, there was no kinks in this outer uh, stainless steel part. So I can see a tiny bit of wave there if I really look for it. And I can feel a little bit of it right there with my thumb. And same thing here, but it definitely does not stand out. Uh, I don't think, I think once installed, I'm not going to, to see that. So I would call this salvaged. So guys, thanks for hanging out in the shop with me for another functional 3D print. I'm really happy with, uh, with how this turned out. Uh, this held up really, really well. I don't know if you saw, like, I started off pretty gentle, just using the clamp. Uh, and then by the end, I was just using this like as if it was a steel forming die and just beating the crap out of it with, uh, with a hammer. Um, hitting it really hard. And uh, I don't see, with the exception of maybe one small little wave in the, the lower die there, I don't see any deformation in, uh, in this guy. Uh, hopefully the camera is... Picking that up, that black stuff in there is felt. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of pressed into place. That's just pieces of felt, that's not cracks. Um, but this held up really, really well for how hard I was hitting it. And this is not printed solid either. This is printed at 60% infill, so it's plenty solid enough. Um, I tend not to like to print things at 100% infill because uh, if your flow is even the slightest bit off, uh, your print ends up turning into a real mess because it's trying to fit 100% material in every single layer. Even knocking your infill down just a little bit, you'll end up with much more accurate prints where you need lines like this. And I can hear you guys down in the comments, no, I don't have a West Hammer, only an East one. Guys, thanks for hanging out. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button. If this is your first time on the channel and you like functional 3D prints and seeing work like this done, uh, consider subscribing. I do a new video like this every single Friday. And guys, if you do, I will see you next Friday.